Hi, I'm Amy Harbison and welcome to Seniors Today, a monthly program produced by the Commission on Aging. Many months of COVID-19 has made pandemic fatigue and social isolation major issues, particularly for older adults. Here with us today is Stephanie Zweck, Program Director of Senior Services at the affiliated Sante Group, which provides mental health counseling, prevention, and early intervention. Stephanie, thanks so much for joining us. This is, oh, thank you for having me. This is such a big issue and topic right now, for sure. What are you seeing kind of on the ground in terms of uh, increasing mental health issues in our community? Well, what we're seeing really is that older adults are, have really been uniquely susceptible to increased mental health concerns. Obviously, the whole population in general is having it, uh, but you've got older adults who, especially with the population that we work with, are already at home more often. You know, they're already having trouble or don't get out as often as they would like to, but now they're really afraid to go out. Um, so you have a lot of people that First of all, you have people that never have had mental health issues before or never thought of themselves as having mental health issues before, now having a lot of increased anxiety and depressive symptoms. And then you have people who already had mental health issues and having all of this stuff overlaid on top of it. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a significant problem for older adults. I mean, it's definitely going to be something that we're going to have to deal with as time goes on. What symptoms would you say are, are red flags for uh, family members or caregivers because uh, this is going on such a long time and people need to be able to feel like and identify when things are really getting tough? Yeah, I would say that the, the big red flags would be large changes in behavior. Mm -hmm. So for example, if somebody was a regular sleeper and suddenly you're hearing that they're telling you that they're not sleeping well or they're waking up in the middle of the night, can't get back to bed because they're thinking about everything that's going on. Or say they're sleeping most of the day. They were always somebody who got up and had a schedule and did things, but now they're basically staying home, staying in bed, not doing much, eating less, eating more. I know everyone jokes about the COVID-15, but, <laughs> but the thing is, is that what, one of those things that tells us that someone's going through a lot of anxiety and they're using food as a way to deal with their anxiety, which of course, in some ways is a little bit normal, <laughs> but in other ways it can really go out of hand, especially if someone has a lot of other prior health conditions like diabetes or you know high blood pressure when someone's gaining a lot of weight or losing a lot of weight not very good so what you're looking for is changes is changes in their behavior increased talk of being sad being feeling helpless feeling like things will never end that sort of stuff and that's a that's a market change in how they used to talk about their life right okay um, tell me what treatment is available through the county and through your services too well, for my through the county, you know, you can be referred to a variety of different programs that could provide you with counseling. There's a lot of short-term options too. Sometimes people get afraid when they think about counseling that it's going to be like this long-term scary thing, you know. Um, but really, there's a lot of really good short-term uh, therapies that can help clients, especially uh, like. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, that's what you hear about a lot, um, and different types of counseling that don't have to be really long term. Um, they can be if you know that's something that you want. Um, my program, for example, provides individual therapy for older adults in their homes pre-pandemic. Um, and uh, we, it's a short term model, but up to 25 visits. Now, during the COVID-19 emergency, most places are doing things via telehealth. That includes our program. Um, so we provide telehealth in any way that we can, whether it's via video or just via phone, if clients don't have access to video. But, and I think that's pretty much around the, you know, around the area, that's what everyone's doing. Because with older adults, it's, it's very scary them going out and whether or not, because there's not a lot of, everyone's not being tested daily for COVID, we don't wanna bring in anything to an older adult's home, you know, and then, them end up getting sick. So that's really the concern. What about for the fall into winter? Do you have any recommendations for people to kind of boost, you know, extra, give extra boost to their mental health during this? Yeah. 
Um, one of the things, so I run a group weekly as um, a virtual group um, out of a senior center. And one of the things that we talk about also is, especially at this time of year when it's fall, is to start getting out. I mean, just outside, like walking in your neighborhood. Because people sometimes think that, you know, stay at home means like literally between four walls. One of the things that can really help your mental health is just to walk in your neighborhood, any nearby parks, just to get out and about to have the fresh air. That will really help. I know that our age group tends to not want to do a lot of computer stuff. It doesn't tend to be something that they're necessarily familiar with. But I have seen a lot of people make a lot of changes regarding their ability to see their family on Zoom, FaceTime, you know, Google Duo, whatever you have, whatever you know, platform you can use. And staying in contact with your family, with your friends in any way that's possible is very important. And that could mean also outside with masks, social distancing in a big circle. You know, I know older adults that do that. And because like as, as uh, literally when they talk about it, they talk about how great they feel afterwards because they get to see their friends face to face. Um, you know, but there's a way to do it in a safe way, but being aware of that, staying connected, getting outside your house. Okay, those are terrific choices. Um, I want to make sure that we have a phone number. If people feel like the symptoms they're feeling are um, not getting better and mm -hmm. or caregivers are concerned, what's the best number? What's the best place for them to reach out? Well, certainly you can call our program. Um, and our phone number for referrals is 301-572-6585. And the extension is 2190. Despite the fact that we aren't in the office because everyone's working from home, I check the messages all the time. So I get all the, um, all the messages for referrals. And you, you know, I'll give you a call back. We'll talk about what's going on. And we'll see if you know, counseling is the right route for you. I also want to uh, mention the fact that we not only work with seniors, but we work with the caregivers of seniors. So while we work with people who are 60 and older, those people who are younger than 60, but who are the full-time caregivers of an older adult can absolutely get our help. Um, and because caregiving right now is even more stressful than it was prior to the pandemic. And we understand that. Um, so you should reach out. And if nothing else, if you're not sure, give us a call. You know, we can talk about it and, you know, figure out, is this something you want, you know? Um, and if you don't, we can figure out other things. Um, but if you are willing to be open to it, then we can absolutely make a referral for our program. Stephanie, that's terrific. It's so important to include caregivers in this thinking. So thank you so much for letting us know that there are resources out there. Oh, yeah. One other thing I forgot to mention, that our program is free. <laughs> so it's free for all county residents who are age 60 and older or who are the caregiver of an, of an older adult 60 and older. That's so terrific. you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Wonderful. Stephanie, thank you so much for letting us know about these incredible mental health resources. You are loved. You are valued. You are resilient. You got this. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides at aarp.org slash caregiving. The public libraries are always the center of our community. And when the pandemic hit, they immediately moved to virtual programming to respond to community needs. Here to talk to us today is Anita Vassallo, the director of Montgomery County Libraries. Welcome, Anita. Hi, Amy. It is so good to see you. And thank you so much for having me on the show. My pleasure. And uh, boy, it's, it's been busy in your neck of the woods, I, I imagine. Yes, we have been doing a lot since we um, closed our physical buildings back in March on March 16th. Um, although we have not been open for public access, uh, the library has never stopped operating all along. And now here we are near the end of October. Unbelievable. Hard to believe. So tell us about how life has changed for the libraries 
since COVID-19 and how you've responded? Sure. Uh, we began our uh, shift to virtual and digital uh, provision of services almost immediately. Um, when we closed back in March, we had never done a virtual program. We'd never done an online streaming program. We had our first one on March 23rd, which was a story time. Right. And we have since ramped up uh, to host and offer hundreds of programs um, on a wide variety of topic, a lot of which would be of interest to your viewers. We do things on employment, consumer programs, uh, financial, wellness, uh, fitness. We have our uh, traditional library book discussions. We have conversation clubs of, in French, Spanish, and English. We've hosted um, major speakers through our Contemporary Conversations program that we do in partnership with the Friends of the Library in Montgomery County and uh, craft programs. So there's something for pretty much everyone available through our website, of course. We also, um, on July 6th, launched our Holds to Go service. And this allows people to place a hold on a physical item either online or by calling their library, and then they can make an appointment to come by and pick it up. This is contactless pickup. So the items are available um, in the vestibule or outside the branch, and um, you're there. It's your time to be there. We do ask that everyone comes masked, of course. In terms of the physical materials, I did want to let people know that library fines are currently suspended. So we're not charging for any overdue items. We do still have our due dates in effect. So we ask you to return your materials after the usual three weeks or to renew them if you need to keep them longer. But if you're not able to get them back at the branch, you don't have to be worried about um, accruing a large amount of library fines. We're not doing that at this point in time. The other thing that I wanted to let your viewers know if they have a concern about borrowing materials from the library is that we quarantine everything that's returned to us for 120 hours, which is five days. Um, that's the current guidance that we have um, in terms of the, the very small concern about fomites being on surfaces that might be transmitted. So those are a few of the things that we're doing to um, help to make the community feel that it is safe to borrow materials from the library. And then, of course, we have a wide range of digital resources that people can download, um, ebooks, streaming movies, um, musical performances, magazines, and all sorts of things for kids. So there's a lot going on at the library and a lot for people to be able to access right now, even though our buildings aren't open. So tell me a little bit, I mean, that's extraordinary, and I can't even imagine what it took to turn all of that around in such a, a short period of time. Tell me about, I know our county, as many counties do, and I think COVID has made it even more aware of this, suffer from this real digital divide in terms of access. What are you doing about that? Yeah, that, that is a real concern, um, both to county administration in general and of course to public libraries because we're providing all these wonderful things, but if you are uh, not able to afford internet access or if you're in an, an area of the, of the county where it's difficult to get it, you can't use our resources and that's extremely troubling. So um, we are getting ready to um, circulate to, to allow our residents to reserve and check out um, 250 hotspots that will come with a data plan and um, during the time that you have them, which is a two week period, it, it is um, unlimited data use. So you could have, you know, if you have three or four people in your family all on their different devices, they would be able to use that. The county is working on a program right now underway where they are um, boosting the wireless signature, um, signal at seven of our libraries um, to reach out into the parking lot and beyond. So that's underway right now, and that is in um, partnership with the Department of Technology Services. I know that um, you know with the colder weather coming, that's not always going to be an option for people. Um, but at most of the libraries, you can pick up the wireless sig uh, signal outside. We never turn off our wireless. It's available 24 seven. 
Um, and as I said, we're working to boost the signal so that more people can take advantage of that. I have a question too. I, I don't know if you saw today's Washington Post, but there was this beautiful article about not only of people, this, the writer said she had lost many things during COVID, but also one of the biggest losses was the public library. And I think I would imagine many people feel the loss of not being able to go into the library and use the library it's so much more than books. Um, it's, it's so much more. So do you have any better sense now? Are you working any, under any uh, plan of when you might ultimately open up? I know that's probably a difficult question, but I know people are probably curious. So um, we are getting ready to launch um, some computer labs at some of our branches where we can um, arrange the space to be sure of social distancing, physical distancing, and safety for both staff and our customers. And we hope to have that um, open and going sometime in November. In terms of actually opening the branches um, for resumption of services inside, uh, of course, we're a Department of County Government and reopening the libraries in that way is slated for phase three. Um, so as you know, we're in phase two and the county executive, Mr. Elridge, the chief public health officer, um, Dr. Gales and Dr. Stoddard, the chief of the Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security are being very cautious and um, you know, considering the, the safety of our community very seriously before we make any moves to move forward for any further resumption of our services. So um, I know that the holds to go service is, is not 100% um, like coming to the library and picking out your own books, but the librarians are very willing to help people on the phone. Um, if someone wants to call and say my grandson is coming to visit me for two weeks and I'd like to get 25 picture books for him, we'll put that together and have it available for you to pick up. Um, the Holds to Go service has been very popular. We launched that on July 6th and I know um, that by now we have done well over 100,000 appointments for people to come in and pick up materials. So when people we, call, should they be calling a general phone number or should they call their local branch if they need support? They can call their local branch um, during our regular business hours. Our hours are, are not as, um, they're a little bit restricted. We're doing 56 hours of service at all of our branches. Um, so we close a little earlier and we open a little later than we were um, prior to the COVID-19 hitting us. Well, Anita, the libraries are so important, remain critically important during this uh, unusual time in our lives. So thank you for all that you and your staff are doing. And we look forward to uh, speaking to you sometime when things are back open again. But in the meantime, thank you for letting us know about all the services that are still available to people that they can access virtually. Well, thank you so much, Amy. I'm really pleased that I'm able to be on the program. And I, I would like to say that none of this would be possible without the wonderful staff that is so dedicated to serving the community, the staff of Montgomery County Public Libraries. And we are ready and willing to see you. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 Although feelings of loneliness and isolation have increased during the pandemic for many older adults, thanks to Senior Planet, many people are now learning new platforms to connect with family and friends and to learn other activities. I'm here talking to Mitsuko Herrera 
and Shivali Hari Bhakti from Senior Planet Montgomery County. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, Thank you for having us. Well, first of all, can you tell us a little bit about you, the Senior Planet mission as it relates to older adults and how you're helping older adults to stay more connected, especially if they're not as familiar with these new platforms? Sure, happy to. Thank you so much, Amy, for having us. So Senior Planet Montgomery is a organization that is powered by Older Adults Technology Services. And we are supported locally by the Montgomery County Department of Technology Services and the Department of Environmental Protection. So prior to COVID, all of our classes were offered in person at locations all throughout the county. But since March, we've been able to transition and have all of our classes now virtually over Zoom. And now since Senior Planet Montgomery has a few chapter locations um, across the country, people can attend classes in any region since they're all remote. Now, you might be wondering what kinds of classes we have, and we actually have um, quite a few, and they're kind of grouped together in three buckets. So we have some classes that will help you help seniors with um, some daily or weekly tasks that they might have, such as um, you know how to use Zoom to keep in touch with their family, um, or how to manage their finances and budget using things like Excel or other applications. We also have programs to help them with lifelong learning, such as Internet of Things. We have a class that helps them learn about smart thermostats, as well as streaming smart TVs. And then we also have um, other classes that might be of interest, such as online shopping and telemedicine. So the programming is um, very diverse and robust, and it's been really going well so far. That's great. Do you get any feedback? from your participants, especially in this virtual world, how are you knowing um, that these platforms are really working for them and helpful to them? Yeah, great question. That actually um, we, were, we were just had an event where we had a few members come, on, come and give testimonials to how their programs are really impacting their daily lives. So I think first and foremost, it has helped them with feeling more connected during these challenging times. And second of all, it's really helped them stay active, um, eat socially and also physically. That's we also, oh, go ahead. Sorry, um, we, we also ask um, respond, we ask people who come to our courses to fill out a little survey um, and consistently you know, in the high 90s, people love the instructors, they love the programs. Um, but as Shivali said, you know, anecdotally, there's a lot of people who basically said how being able to use technology really changed their life for the better. Um, it really enabled them to feel that not only were they more connected, but they could do more things and to just feel more confident about, and, you know, more confident pre-COVID, but definitely in this environment, the feeling that I might not leave my home, but I can stay connected in the world and I can do things. Um, and also for a lot of people that the best thing about taking these courses is that it's not just that somebody in my family came by and gave me this rapid fire lesson and then they left and I don't know how to do things after they leave, but it's really the feeling of like, I can do it. That's, I think that's huge, the empowerment piece. And then it keeps them willing to try new technologies as they develop, which is so important. I wanted to ask you about, we're in such a diverse county, and I'm curious to know, um, we have many people that are in English, for whom English is not their primary language. We also have a lot of people with disabilities that um, ha may have challenges and need some extra support. How are you making your programming accessible to our diverse county? Yeah, so a big priority for us is making our programs as accessible as possible. So one of the things that we've already done is we've been able to offer programs at least twice a week um, in Spanish, and we continue to do that. Um, another thing that we've done is start to pave the way for offering classes in Mandarin as well. Um, and this is going to be 
both, you know, a week on a weekly basis as well as perhaps on a more ongoing basis as well. And we are currently growing that part of the program. So okay. we, yeah, we are very, um, we are very focused on making our programs accessible. And not only do we have classes in different languages, but we also make our classes accessible to people who have low vision um, and other um, needs as well. That's great. And, and I would just add that we do try to expand our partnership um, with people like the Gilcrest Center, um, the Chinese uh, uh, Cultural and Community Center, CCACC, and other groups, because we really want to try to, um, particularly when we're trying to reach people for whom English is not the first language, is there may be a group or an organization that they um, connect with now. And so we're always looking for more ways to expand that connection so that you can make people aware of what's out there. Because it's part as part of the county's racial equity initiative, we do also want to make sure that um, every community feels like they can connect in, they can participate in, in, the, in the county government, they can access services, and that they too can use the internet for daily living and to be a full participant in the digital economy. That's so important. Um, if people are interested in tech support needs, um, just to be able to maintain what they're doing, and also if they want to learn more about your services, is there a, a best way to reach you all? Sure. Um, there's a couple different ways. Um, one way is that the county has the um, Montgomery Connects program. Um, and for that, you go to the county website forward slash OBP for Office of Broadband Programs. Um, and there, the um, goal there is that uh, if you've got a one-on-one -on -one support question, um, they can be helping. Also, if you don't have access to the internet at home, um, we are trying to provide assistance for people to get signed up for one of the $10 a month programs that's available in the county. And we can provide you assistance. You can go to the website or you can just call 311 and you can ask for that and we'll help that. And then through Senior Planet Montgomery, we also have some other additional tech support. So um, first and foremost, to reach us, go, go online to www.seniorplanet.org forward slash Montgomery. And that is where you can find all of our programming, um, both locally, um, Montgomery County specific and nationally from the other regions. Um, these programs are completely free to the residents of Montgomery County, and we think with winter coming, this is another silver lining um, that seniors will be able to attend our programs while staying at home safe and warm, and um, it, they can still engage from home um, while having access to these classes. Um, in addition to our normal weekly programming on the topics that I mentioned previously, we also offer tech talks, which are opportunities for seniors to come and get hands on support with their devices. So for example, we have a partnership with Verizon where every month or so some volunteers from Verizon will come on our programs and we will assign them a, um, a member that they can help with. And these programs are very um, beneficial to people who have very specific custom questions and they really get very robust responses. Well, I wish we could take more time, but we're at time right now and we'll have to have you back to continue telling us of the amazing work you're doing, particularly during this unusual time in our history. Thank you both so much for coming on and letting us know Planet uh, Montgomery's incredible services. And I think you'll be hearing from a lot of people who want to connect and stay connected. So thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. That's it for Seniors Today. You can access this show and so much more information about county services for older adults by going to the Montgomery County Senior website at www.montgomerycountymd.gov slash seniors, or you can call the Senior Resource Line at 240-777-3000. Thanks so much for joining us.